Hello everyone, it's Janice Lee, the Decorative Arts Appraiser, and today I'm here with Rachel Ray, who is a conservator, and she's going to talk to us about her business and her career, how she got started, and then she's going to show us some objects. Oh, how I got started. Well, I was, I was a printmaker, and I still am a printmaker, but uh, I never really understood how I was going to you know, um, make a living and like, fit into society. <laughs> so I um, eventually I learned about conservation. I loved it. I love how you study um, art history. You study a lot of uh, techniques and materials used down through all, I mean, uh, all the history of all time. And, and then you learn how to repair things in order to extend their life. So I just thought that was great. So that's cool. So that's how I got into this. And then I got a master's degree in conservation of um, paper. We're located, surprisingly, not in Ohio, but we're located near Washington, D.C. And uh, what we do is we repair things that are made out of paper that are artifacts, like historic artifacts made out of paper or fine art on paper. And uh, we can remove mold, we can, um, we can mend tears so that they're not visible, we can remove stains, that kind of, that's the kind of work we do. So we're in your workspace, in your studio, at your company, and you've got some objects that you've done some repairs to some before and after pictures sure. that we're going to take a look at and then we also have some things that you are working on and then i have the pleasure of having some woodblock prints that belong to me that need some work and you're going to take a, a look at them and give us some uh, feedback on that before you actually begin to repair it. well i have it on it here that's uh, just been conserved and uh, it's, a, it's a pencil drawing, and you can see the after. And so what I've done is I've inserted paper of very similar thickness and texture along this right edge, so that now you cannot see that there's missing paper there. So, um, you know, the reason I did that is because, you know, that missing paper really, it really took your eye away from the drawing. So that's why I've inserted it there. And I've removed the acid from the paper, which makes it look a lighter brown, more, this is more like the original color of the paper, which is a, a tan color paper. And then uh, this is the, the finished product, and it's ready to uh, be delivered to the collector. So about how long did it take for the process from beginning to end for you to make the repairs? I would say maybe about uh, all together, maybe about 10 hours. Of course, they're all different depending upon you know, what it is, what type of repair has to be made and how long it takes you as well and, and, and because uh, different things have different types of damage. Um, I'll show you another thing that I have here that is um, from uh, a, a Jewish museum in Baltimore. They had a flood, unfortunately. And this is an animal skin. And a flood, this was submerged in water that was in the, the actual exhibition space. So um, we're lucky that we have it at all. And you can see it's very wrinkled up because it's an animal skin and when it dried, it contracted like this and distorted. So that's part of the problem. And the other problem is possible mold. But the interesting thing about this, this is that it is, it is a document about being safe during childbirth. Hmm. And yeah, it, about being protected during childbirth. And of course it's all in Hebrew, but I had to tell the director that this is not really authentic because this bright green, this, this grass green, this is a modern color. Okay. Yeah, now this old uh, drab looking green, this is a very old green and it's made from probably from copper with you put some, some uh, acid on the copper, it forms this corrosion product and then you get this. It's a very old green. So that is very authentic. This, 
bright green, which is all around the borders and all over this document, this bright green is a modern green. This is a 20th century green. So I had to tell the director that this is not old. And he said, well, somebody just picked it up in Jerusalem. And um, it was probably created in the style of an old document, mm -hmm. but it wasn't really intended to fool anybody because they're obviously using a new green. So they're not trying to create a forgery. They're just trying to create something that's in a tradition. So anyway, so this uh, museum in Baltimore had this. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some uh, mold deactivation and I'm going to flatten it and um, then I'm going to make sure that the paint is stable and then I'm going to put it in a, an encapsulation so that it'll stay nice and flat in our pile of encapsulation. I don't expect it to be too time consuming, maybe, maybe six hours. There are some small tears and little things that need to be remedied. You see a break there. You can see a small old mend there. You know, I'll do some uh, sm small um, repairs, but mostly it's just um, making sure that um, mold is deactivated and making sure that it's flat and then making sure that it's in an encapsulation that will keep it. So does the mold on this animal skin act differently than mold on paper? Mold is attracted to certain different things that it likes to eat. <laughs> and you know there are a lot of different things that mold can consume. There are a lot of different types of mold that live at different temperatures and different relative humidities. So you know, all of that's a that's a big subject. But um, what we basically are going to do is we're going to remove enough of the water that it will be deactivated, so that it will it will not continue. So I don't know. I mean, it's it's seen better days. You tell me. <laughs> okay. Well, this is a, a, an ukiyo-e print. This is uh, you know, um, this is a very beautiful wood block, but the paper is in very bad condition. It's uh, very acidic. It's experienced a great deal of aging dark reddish brown and you can see these missing pieces that we can perhaps put back together again and uh, the, the whole goal is to remove as much acid from the paper as possible okay because the acid causes the paper to become extremely weak and fragile and um, and it makes it uh, highly damaged on a molecular level. So uh, what I try to do is to reduce the amount of acid as much as possible. And in that process, when you reduce the acid, you're also removing some of this yellowish, brownish, and reddish discoloration that is acidic discoloration. So then what we will receive as a result is, is a color of the paper that's much closer to the original color. And then uh, we can take these, these pieces that we have, put them back in the position, and if there are missing areas, like there's a small missing area there, there's a missing area over the face mm -hmm. there, we can insert a piece of paper in that area. So that at least you don't notice it as much. It doesn't away from the green. So what we want to do is to make it closer to neutral again, mm -hmm. or maybe even slightly alkaline. But we have to do that without changing any of the colors. Some of these colors are sensitive to changes in colors. So Japanese prints are complicated, and until we do testing, we don't really know for sure what, uh, what would be the best solution. So you talk about the spaces where paper is missing. So how do you put paper back in? How do you decide which paper matches up? Well, we use very high quality uh, Japanese papers. They're conservation papers. In other words, they're very stable. 
they don't develop acids at a, at a rapid rate. Um, they're very beautiful, long fibery papers. They're handmade. And they come in all different thicknesses and uh, colorations. And what I'll do is I'll find something that is similar to the missing piece of paper. Similar in thickness, similar in, in texture, similar in color. And then I'll meticulously create a shape that fits in that area. I'll insert it. And in the end, uh, you would scarcely notice that it was there. So, so that your eye goes to the beauty of the art instead of the ugly or the image. And there are, there are a lot of different thicknesses. Here's an extremely thin paper. Sometimes when I'm dealing with documents that are very, very loose, I might take a, a very thin Japanese paper and I might adhere it over the surface so that you can read through it. And I would only do that if something was extremely, extremely weak and I had really no other option. But, uh, so these are very um, artfully made thin pieces of paper. Very difficult to make a piece of paper this thin. But uh, the Japanese are, are amazing craftsmen and they can do that. So that's my goal. I hope you found this session informative. Also check out my other channels where I share information that you may find useful around appraising, damage and loss, and estate planning. Thank you.